News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And top of the morning to you. This is Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. And uh, today is an uh, uh, important day, Poe Day, but uh, Newsline is live, as always. And uh, this morning we've got a former parliamentarian and uh, very much member of the local um, municipality seen in the Devil and Mount Lavinia area is Mr. Kesela Gunasekra. Very good morning to you, Mr. Gunasekra. Good morning, fellas. Um, lovely seeing you again on our programs. Um, now then, what happened at the elections? Your message, you couldn't convince enough people? Yeah, what, I what, do you, so, well, right? what do you think? What was the main... You, you, now the campaign's finished, the election's yeah. finished. So, so now, post-mortem. What did you... What was the message you were getting from the people? Postmortem is very essential. I don't know whether anybody has done a postmortem. Yes, but it's very essential. I, well, I, what was the I, point? What was the people trying to say here? Well, fundamentally, there were several reasons. Yeah. I feel number one, he, to some degree, in in the outskirts, uh, I feel it's the uh, fertilizer issue. Mm -hmm. The farmers not being satisfied with what was going on. Then number two. Uh, uh, they were not happy with, with, with the government because certain promises that they, that they made before 8th uh, January mm. uh, were not being pursued by the government. When, the you mean cert, when you mean certain matters, you're talking about taking action against and, the, uh, former, the former government members. Taking action against people who have done wrong things. Yeah. High profile, big ticket items, but nothing was done. That's what. That's that's, that's, that's what it, it is. That, is that's, that was reason number two. Yeah. Then number three, I feel uh, all in all, they were not happy with the government. I mean, they wanted to teach a lesson to the government. I feel. So it was that's a protest a, vote. It was, on, it was it was more or less a protest vote. And isn't it marvelous that the people normally these are local elections? You might get, be lucky to get 52, 53, 52, 54, 55, and 75. So you had 75. So that it's, it's a clear indication. That it's a clear indication of the frustration, frustration levels of the people in this country. Very That's clear right. message. That's very clear message. And uh, they've uh, they've done well. They've and even the parties uh, treated this as a sort of a, a de facto referendum. Yeah. And you had. Although it is not so. It is not so. But but that's how it was. Yeah. Um, you know that that's how it was. So. What okay, so now that's happened, they made a protest vote. Yeah. But it's all they've kissed and made up. They're yeah. all together now, again. Correct, correct. Of course so what I, does I, that I, indicate then? Yeah, and I, I think that the that uh, the government rushed in uh, uh, after the results, uh, they thought that uh, the opposition uh, had uh, made certain inroads and hence certain uh, actions should be taken. I, I, I fundamentally feel that uh, the government shouldn't have pursued that course. I mean, uh, you have to tell the people, look, yeah, this is a local authority election. Mm -hmm. You have given your judgment. We stand by that. That's all. Mm -hmm. And we move forward. Now, the, this government, if I may say so, uh, is renowned and has made its mark by simply not listening to the people, which is a bit... Uh, of a sort of perverse situation because they are the people who promised to come here, re-establish good governance and to deliver, to yeah. deliver a level playing field. Correct. They complained bitterly about the international reputation this country was suffering Correct. and uh, and about reconciliation and so on. Well, I dare say that they haven't done jack about uh, the uh, reconciliation. The Tamil people or the people who affected by uh, the war, mainly, not all, okay, but mainly in the majority were people who resident in the North Northeast, the former conflict areas. These are lovely words, you know, former conflict areas, uh, reconciliation. But the bottom line is that eight, nearly nine years now after the end of the war, there are still people there without housing. It's the most basic ingredient. There's still people there who are fighting, asking for their land back or 
appropriate compensation and which should not be steeped in bureaucracy and because it's already frustrating that you've lost your land for security reasons and so on and however much it may be national when it affects you you can't see the national picture yeah. right you're only thinking well where's my land so then compensate them hurry up and compensate them they've got the money you can't say they don't have the money because when we look at the bond uh, the profits the obscene amount of money made in that short period of time then you will know that there was no lunacy here they were ruthless in their quest to rob the people so these people are without housing that's the most basic thing then there's water electricity schools these are basic human rights and this government have not delivered they they spoke very big and harsh about this so now uh, um, okay so now we have a situation that this government led by the UNP this bit that I'm about to say they have this lovely thing called the CCEM it's a cabinet within the cabinet that's where it all happens and the Prime Minister is play, paying lip service to the rest of the cabinet because no project goes by without the input of the CCEM and yesterday President Sivisena mentioned this in cabinet and it is all there for us to read in the daily mirror right and the president is absolutely right this the, he must have had loads of complaints including from UNP people and he says that the, he, looking at Akhila Viraj Kariwasim he said he told him you claim that Volkswagen would invest you took us to the groundbreaking ceremony immediately after that we received a message that Volkswagen were not investing it is a deception of the people would do you agree that this is a deception I'm not talking about only the Volkswagen do you think it's a deception of the people well the question here is somebody has tried to bring an investment to the country and it has failed I, I, I feel I, I, think, I think you should look at it from that point of view it is it was a complete non-starter case now come on the, the Volkswagen company have invested millions of dollars in the factory in Pune in, in India I'm not sure if it's Pune but anyway in India, India right and they've already exported over 1 million units to Brazil from there do you think that it makes any sense to for them to come and have a little plant in Kurunagala or wherever here to, to, to do what? Come on. Then who are they fooling? This, this is all. There was a collateral purpose. And that collateral purpose was to get, grab some land. They probably had coconut trees on there or something else valuable, which is all probably cut off now and sold off. And this is for petty, short-term, immediate gain, not for medium and long-term country benefit. Well, what rubbish are they talking about? Do they think um, case, now that people can be hoodwinked so easily? It's an insult to you, to me, to Joe Public out there. Yeah. I understand. The, the question is this, uh, for us. I feel that the government has to realize that, there are, that, that they are failing in several areas. If, I, if you allow me, I will mention uh, several areas that yeah. they are failing. Number one. Today, uh, the, I think the central bank came out with figures that there is excess liquidity in the market. Yeah. Uh, over 40 billion rupees excess liquidity. Now, it's a very clear indication that the private sector, which is the engine of growth in the economy, yeah. he is not investing. Now, when the private sector does not invest, it is uh, of paramount importance that the government steps in. Yes. This is always the case, you know, there are, there are certain uh, periods where the private sector takes a step back. In that situation, the government has to step in and uh, keep investing, keep pumping. That's very essential. Yeah. And they must invest in such a way that the money trickles down to the lowest level. Now, this is where I feel that the government is uh, faulty because uh, they, they don't understand this. They need to understand that if they don't invest, people... Uh, in in those areas are not going to get money because if say say, say for instance you invest in road uh, development people get money because workers will have to be engaged and they get money so it trickles down to the lowest level 
if they invest in uh, other programs, ANICATS building up, devel developing ANICATS, etc., people get money. These are the areas that the government has to concentrate on the short run, shorter run, because you know why? Today, if money is excess and nobody is investing, yeah. and the government is also not doing anything about it, we are in serious trouble. And if you if you look at the uh, views of the uh, people in the in the periphery, you realize that most of them are not satisfied because they don't have uh, avenues to earn money. Mm. Why? Because the government now see when in 1977 when the UNP government came into power, the first thing that they did was to start a huge housing program. Mm. Each uh, division of secretariat area 25 houses. 25 houses is a massive amount of money. Yeah? Mm. They started with that. Why? Because they realized that when you start with building houses, those people in those areas get money into their hands. Why? But because the, you have to employ them. So, but these people, they just uh, short, -changed, short circuited the financial system and robbed, robbed this country of billions of rupees and cost the uh, state funds uh, not to get enough return. Yeah. And they did that because they changed the system. And that's what they did. So wh why can't they, I mean, the, this is the same United National Party you're talking about. Yeah. So what's the problem then? No, the problem is, this, you know, they, they need to understand that they have to change their policies. They need to... What about rethink. changing the leadership? <laughs> Those, these are things that have to be discussed. Because you can't... Come on, because. you've just said, the yeah. UNP, you've waxed eloquent about J.R. Chai Wadena and his policy. Correct. Right? Now you've waxed eloquent. That was not some other party. Yeah, it's... It's that party still here. Yeah, yeah. But is. they've got a problem. So why don't we... We always call a spade a spade. Yeah. Right? So let's um, get everybody else realizing that this is just tragic. Yeah. The, the, it's not the party we're talking about. Yeah. It's because if you... The party may have good ideals and ideology and so on, but if the leadership is... I mean, look at it. Come on, come on. Look at the record. Therefore, we have the chairman of the party, Malik Samarovikraman. Can you, with your heart on your hand, say that Malik is a jolly good fellow and he's doing the party proud? You can't. I think you can't. I don't know. Can you? Can you say that? <laughs> right? Uh, okay, don't answer. Well, then you have the leader of the party. <laughs> look at the record, for Christ's sake. Come on. It's 23 years leader of this party. How many electoral defeats? How many? About 30. Right, about 30. 40 years continuous service. Then we have, we all know what happened to dear Ravi, right? And then we have Kabir Hashim who's clutching at straws and staying there, being dragged in. Breakfast meeting. We won't let him forget the breakfast meeting. I hope he enjoyed his kiribat because, you know, that meeting was the start of the biggest financial fraud ever to afflict the people of this country. So what happened? What happened to this UNP that you're talking about, JR, laissez-faire attitudes and uh, uh, policies and so on? For, for us, over the years, uh, things have changed rapidly yeah. and for the worse, I feel. Yeah. You know, you uh, gone are the days where you had uh, mem uh, ministers, deputy ministers, who were, who were willing to put their life for the country. Yeah. You don't have that anymore. Yeah. You had you had people coming into uh, parliament, <coughs> holding posts of the uh, holding posts of minister, deputy minister, etc. And when the time is uh, right for them to go, they go by bus home. Yeah. We had we had people like that, but we don't have that caliber anymore. Yeah. We have a serious problem. We are somebody comes into parliament and within six years he becomes a billionaire. That's a, that's, a, that's the saddest part of this. And story. yet, the chairman of the Institute of Policy Studies and an advisor to the Finance Ministry uh, quoted in the Daily Mirror of the 26th of February 2018 says, There is no investment, jobs or growth. People view this government as dysfunctional and incompetent. The Rajapaksas won a war, bought peace and developed infrastructure. So said Dr. Razin Sali, chairman of the IPS, handpicked by the Prime Minister. Now, I, think he's, I think he's right. He's be right. He's, he's right. We, we need to understand. What he says is perfectly correct. There is there no, investment, is no investment, jobs so, or growth. Yeah, if there is no investment coming in, it's a very clear indication that the private sector is not investing. And there are no overseas investments coming in as well. 
in that situation the government has to do big borrow or steal but borrow and invest because the government has to play the lead role in this context i feel big borrow or steal brilliant words let's go for a break when we come back on newsline we'll give you a bit more detail on that shall we news first newsline with faraz shaukatali welcome back to newsline big borrow or steal what are we going to do what is this government going to do are they going to beg are they going to borrow or are they going to steal <laughs> what are they going to do plus there are two things that the government has to concentrate on right i feel they need to take cognizance of what has happened in in the immediate past yeah and get the act together number one they need to realize that uh, there is no investment coming in therefore the government has to step in and do the investing right in that context you can borrow from governments you can borrow from banks you can borrow from anywhere right you jolly well have to do that that's on the shorter run now right and ensure that you win the confidence of the people you win the confidence of the private sector if you don't do that you are in serious trouble two ha- appoint good quality people yeah. as ministers and state ministers you can't appoint people who cannot deliver yeah. as ministers and state ministers now it's a question of choosing the correct person that's very essential yeah. when when you when you when you embark on that you will automatically realize that changes will take place and then things will start uh, moving it's not individuals i'm not worried about individuals individuals will will naturally uh, go away after they make their billions you, no uh, it will naturally go away but the government needs to sit down and discuss and you know i i was i was, I was thinking to myself during the past two weeks after the elections see the amount of activity that the ministers the state ministers the mps were involved in some of them having meetings at 11 o'clock in the night i said if half of these fellows half of these people give gave that amount of uh, time for the uh, affairs of the government or the country we wouldn't have been in this position today i mean some of those some of those meetings started at 11 o'clock in the night what for what for is it for the sake of the people no to grab power the care of human life and happiness and not their destruction is the first and only object of good government thomas jefferson correct you know you need to understand today we have a wide sector of people who are not so happy with the government so find out what is wrong with them number one farmer has to be satisfied he's a man who's producing but with the imf imposing these strict conditions um, the prime minister and his boys uh, cannot give the necessary subsidies so the the fertilizer you know it's controlled why you, don't why don't people really understand this you, it's the imf telling them you can't be subsidizing you you can't be doing this you can't be doing that and the only thing you can do is open it all up now the for us the question is this you need to tell the imf imf uh that there are certain things which we are which we realize will have to be done and whether they like it or not we are going ahead that's what i want the government to do they don't have strong leadership the, the, this do is you think that run in this going to say that to the i am the question is this you embark on this yeah. then you realize that things will fall in line i mean i mean you got to understand we if we don't if we keep listening to practically everybody then we are not going to uh, be successful right. we have to understand what is much more relevant in the present context you have to look out to people you have to look out to farmers you have to look out to their what everything their requirements everything right. how do you do that you sit down and decide what and what you and you need you need experts sir now this agriculture issue i must i must be very fair on this sir this glyphosate problem yes. the first fertilizer issue yeah was a big mistake of the government ta huh? we are many experts were saying for heaven's sake don't change this overnight you can't do this well, now it's, all, it's now found out that yeah. it's not it's not as it was maintained to be so it was a monumental mistake it was a monumental mistake so now what's going to happen why? look at the damage it's why done. why because the government was not willing to willing to listen to the experts ah, i saw you see back to my whole thing exactly back to I, my thing about this the CCA. government has to understand that they need to listen to experts 
You know the agriculture experts. In, well, uh, several sir, of them wrote so, to so the yeah, president and the prime we, minister. We can, we have a, a very high, uh, equally big ticket uh, concern. Um, there's exactly what you're saying. So they need to listen to professionals. And so who have they got? They've got uh, they had a chairman of Sri Lankan Airlines uh, who knew how to sell a cup of coffee, a good cup of coffee, and uh, maybe run a. Uh, apparel business, which is what Mr. Samarabhikram also does, by the way. Uh, but he had no, he was out of his depth when he came to running an airline. It's a pretty, pretty, uh, there are only very few people in this world who know how to do. I didn't see them talking to uh, uh, Mr. O'Leary from right air. Yeah, I didn't see them talking to uh, uh, the, the head, the president of Southwest Airlines. Uh, who's never ever made a, pro a loss in its history. We, right. we, South, we, South we, we have a problem in this country. Every government when they come into power, they feel that they have to give this position to their buddies. That's the biggest mistake that this every government yes, makes. It's all right if their buddies are professionals. But no, no, if the buddies are competent, yes, it's okay. Yeah. But if the buddies are not competent, you know, you have to understand Quoted companies, it's no, it's no, it's no easy task to manage a quoted and company. And those quoted yeah. companies, they're talking about it's quoted no easy companies. Task. We had the former finance minister in his first um, budget allocate, interim budget, whatever you call it, in January 2015. He came there and he said that he's imposing something called a super gains tax. 25% of profits of over 2 billion. He called it. He said these were ill-gotten gains. Who, who is he? Where is the investigation? No investigation, no nothing. 478 companies paid up. Well, they paid the first installment. All right. Now then, of those 478 companies were listed, publicly listed companies doing their business, but they're publicly listed. The top 50 of those companies, of the listed, top 50 listed companies 2013, at the time they had, they were responsible for employing directly over 411,000 people. Right? Their, they reported turnover, so if you added it all up, the top 50, 1.7 trillion, 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 T, trillion turnover. 411,000 plus people being employed directly by them. It's all in their books, right? Then you come, fast forward to 2015, 16, 17, even now 18. One company, Perpetual Treasuries. Number of employees, I don't know, we'll settle for 13, shall we? Even less. Not, not 50. Okay. Not unlisted. Unlisted. Profits, reported profits. Not what I'm saying. Reported profits. Over over twelve and a half billion. billion. Another six billion waiting to be declared. Right? Because of a quirk in the way they did the calculation, they stopped at the thirty first of March twenty sixteen. But there's another six. Some people have estimated that they've made gross of over 40, 50 billion. The easiest way to solve that problem is for the Minister of Finance to impose a super gains tax of 100% over 1 billion rupees to all the primary dealers you have equity there. Because, you know, guess what, Kesrad? Nobody, no primary dealer has ever made a net profit of over a billion rupees in its 17 years that they've been selling these bonds commercially. Correct. Now then, you why can't, can't they do it. that? You can't make that. Amount. Why doesn't the Prime Minister do that? These are things that they... They, that they imposed it. The, the publicly listed companies, the corporates, they didn't have a chance to defend themselves when the, the Minister of Finance said 25% super gains tax, ill-gotten gains. Really? To use that term ill-gotten is very wrong. It is completely wrong. I know somebody who, who's a, a, a member of the insurance companies who was so agitated and cheesed off with it, he paid 
But do you know what? I doubt if he'll ever vote for them again. He said he was hurt because he's been in the business for a long time. time. And to be, for some chap to come along and say, completely, you know, he's complete bull in the china shop. You he know, gotten gains. For us, I feel that every government... Who's, who's ill gotten gains now, Kessel? Well, I'm asking I you know, now. I know. We've got a young chap in, in remand. We've got the father-in-law who's at large, on the run, who's probably waiting to meet the Prime Minister when he's in Singapore today or tomorrow. Is the Prime Minister going to arrest him and bring him back? I mean, he can't arrest him. Is he going to persuade him to bring him back? Those are... He has to answer, yes, I know, I know. For us, you know, every government has to realize that the private sector needs to be looked after. They must be protected at all times. And, you know, the private sector is not happy about slapping various types of taxes at every given uh, budget. Yeah, unless there is consistency, nobody is coming to invest. So this is a problem that every government faces and we, uh, we never realize the importance of the private sector. Now you said the, the former finance minister making uh, use, uh, use of those words, uh, ill-gotten funds. I mean, that's a serious charge. Of course it Very is. Very serious. Now then, those are not things that everywhere MR goes abroad, we've we've had to suffer the indignity of a rogue ambassador. I'm going to say that because those are the allegations and he's on the run. So this ambassador, former ambassador is on the run. Udayangaviratunga. Everywhere MR went, he was there. Bangkok, Korea, wherever he was. Guess what? The rogue governor, Arjuna Mahendran, Wherever the Prime Minister goes, he's there. Even when he was taken away from the governorship of the Central Bank or when they didn't give him another contract. He's all, we have to be very precise with these things. Otherwise, they'll use those words at us again. Right? So, just imagine the, 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 the runaway governor who doesn't want to come and just give a statement. That's all he's supposed to come for. He's going, he'll probably be in Singapore. Imagine the scenario if he was part of the team that was invest, inviting investors to come Coming to Sri Lanka to and make it, and that team would be a lovely team. It would include people like Dr. Harsha De Silva, Malik Samaravikrama, um, Arjuna Mahendran, and of course, De Ranil. Right? This is a joke. A complete travesty. A complete travesty. And they think that they are fooling the people. All they have to do is look at those results from the local elections correct, correct. and they'll figure out what's happening. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I saw in the newspaper say that they, have a, they had called for a report of the, uh, on the election results. There was no necessity to call for a report. For the last three years, they sat down and uh, uh, read so many uh, messages that were coming from the uh, periphery. It would have been very clear for them to change to their course of action. Ill-gotten gains. This is a terrible, terrible tragedy. And I'll tell you what, ecclesiastical law has a way of finding its way around. Guess what? Guess what happened to them? Remember the 165 million? Hmm. Remember the property? Remember, remember the fact that they couldn't remember? Yeah. Who paid what? Oh, yeah. Yeah? And remember all the shame that has brought on them. This is what I mean about the ecclesiastical law working its way. But can this country sustain itself merely on ecle ecclesiastical law and action? What do we okay. need to do promptly now? We, there are two things that we, as I said, the government will sit and decide what course of action. Shorter run and the two years, next two years. That's very important. If they don't invest, we, the country is going down uh, the precipice. That is important. Then they need to understand that they came on the 8th with a promise that the people who did wrong will be brought to book. But that has not happened. Fast track that as well. That is very essential. That should have been done from Jan 8th January. It did not take place. Why? Because we were shielding people. We, we want a different people. operation. And we're shielding people. And I'll, I'll put you, I'll put a country on notice now that the next big 
ticket item that's about to happen. It's called the National Payment Platform. platform. Listen out for that word because that will be the next huge contentious affair. And this government are doing precisely what they're doing best. Going from one controversy to, to another controversy. Another. And that's the way it was on Newsline today. Kesla Agul Sekhra, thank you very much for being on the thank program. You. And we look forward to having you again. Take care. God bless. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali.